Skipper at the Indian Larry Grease Monkey Memorial. In a few moments, we're going to catch up with Tyler Fire, E. Katarina, and Magic Brian, three Daredevil performers from the Lucky Devil Circus Sideshow. I love the circus since I was a kid. I remember the first time I went was at the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia in 1982. And uh, since then I've been hooked. I did a lot of other things with my life until I finally landed in the sideshow and it's been fantastic. I've been in the sideshow full time for almost 10 years now. And is Tyler Fire, is that your real, real last name? I've been Tyler Fire for, uh, for yeah almost 10 years. I was working in a small amusement park down south in North Carolina and a sign painter showed up and the boss said, okay kid, what do you want your sign to say? And so on the spot I had to think of something clever, so I said, the amazing blazing Tyler Fire. And that's it, it's stuck with me ever since. Eating fire is definitely how I made my name in the business when I started out. Since then I've gotten to do a lot of other things which are really fun for me. As it happens when I started at the Coney Island Circus Side Show where I spent seven years, I did not start as the fire eater on the show. I was the outside talker, so I would call the people in and uh, build a little tip, a crowd of people outside the show, and then turn them all inside to buy tickets. So it's the MC, or what, uh, what uh, the Marks or the Rubes would call a barker on the show, but in sideshow lingo, you never use that word. That person's a talker. It's a very elevated position. It's the one to make sure everyone in the show gets paid. So what kind of inclination led you to want to eat swords and do something that could hurt you? Well, sword swallowing is the pinnacle of all the sideshow working acts born freaks, they're self-made freaks that are tattooed or have done exotic things to themselves. I myself can pass for totally normal when I leave work. I can put on a hat, walk right out the door, and go largely unnoticed by people who have just seen me on stage, which is really kind of cool. But of all the working acts of that class of entertainer, sword swallowing is really the pinnacle. There are 62 working sword swallowers in the world. So it's, uh, it's kind of an elite crew, and it's, it's really fun. Learning sword swallowing was terrible. It was years of throwing up in the sink and torture all day long. Now, it's, uh, it's no problem at all. It doesn't hurt, it's no problem. Uh, it's pretty bad on a hangover. Outside of that, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Let's talk a little bit about the sword that you have right here. Is this, how sharp is the sword and what is this used for? This one here is a very special sword for me. This is my Cobra sword. I, uh, I get the swords pre-made, but then I finish and shape them all myself. I like to do a lot of the metal work and keep it all hands on and that's why it's so much fun to do events like this in motorcycle land because you meet so many great metal workers and, and they really dig the craft and I dig their craft so it's a really, it's a fun crossover for all of us. This one here is a sword I do one particular trick with in the show. It's, a, it's very long, it's almost as long as the longest sword I swallow, it's just shy of 27 and a half inches so it does actually hit onto the bottom of my stomach when I finish. And uh, it depends on how far down it goes, depending on how much I've eaten that day. Because since it's actually hitting the bottom, if I've eaten a lot or drank a lot, it'll stretch my stomach down just a little further so that it'll touch my teeth with the hilt. But if I've just gotten up in the morning, for example, you can actually see a couple more inches of blade coming down. But either way, it's still actually hitting the bottom of my stomach. But the fun thing about this particular sword, it has a great big handle. So it allows me to get someone from the audience to pull the sword out. Carrie, would you like to pull the sword out of me? Oh yeah. Can I give you a little lesson in sword swallow? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. All right, Carrie. Here's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna swallow the sword. Okay. I'm gonna lean over okay. and I'm gonna wink at you. When I wink at you, that's your cue. You're gonna grab onto the handle anywhere you want and gently pull the sword straight oh. out. Okay. Now, if you would, by straight out, I mean following the line of my body. A lot of people tend to do straight out like that. And you see, if you pull down on the handle, that pushes up on the pointing end of the sword, okay. which is actually inside my stomach. I'll be careful. All right, okay. Carrie, are you ready? Yes. Are you excited? I'm psyched. Me too, here we okay. Could you yes. feel it as you pulled the sword There's all the way up? Spit all over it. There's, Carrie, I gotta tell you, that's not spit. 
That's I call that stomach snot. Uh, is that right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's kind of creepy, but it was cool. <laughs> gymnastics before that and then I signed up at the circus and I just a little reverse my skill into contortion. What circus? Uh, I run for a bunch of different circuses besides Tyler's, a Lucky Devil Circus. I used to work for Sir de Soleil in Russian State Circus. So that's that. <laughs> How do you train to be a contortionist? Uh, it's just stretching every day. Pretty boring but I kind of got along with that, you can do what you gotta do. <laughs> and how did you meet Tyler and become a part of the Devil Act? Um, it's through Coney Island. I've been doing some shows on Coney Island and he was working there at the Coney Island side show. So we just met there and um, for a few years we've been working together now. And how did you put together your performance tonight and talk a little bit about the, the crazy stretches that you did? Oh, I have a few acts that I kind of have set up already and I just do it for different occasion, occasions, kind of acts that fits in the contest. How long have you done gymnastics? How many years? Oh, I've been doing since since I was five years old until like 18. So I was hardcore, crazy Russian little kid doing gymnastics every day. <laughs> did you want to become a contortionist or did you discover it? Not really. That? I mean, I was always wanted to be a gymnast or like gymnastic coach. That was the top of my dreams. But then like at one of the competitions, a scout from Sir de Soleil approached me and I, in a few years I signed up with them and it starts. Are you always trying to push the boundaries of what you can do with your body? Uh, not so much right now. I used to do it much more <laughs> like three years ago. And you incorporate a little bit of burlesque into your show as well. Yes, that comes from Coney Island. <laughs> And what about your outfit and can you just describe some of the stretches that you did tonight? I did a chest stand, that means when I lie down on the floor on my chest and bring my feet over in front of my face, that's one of them. And Or I can stand on my leg and put the other one up behind my head, something like that. Have you met other contortionists in, the, in uh, Waynesburg or in the city or in the well, state? Well, there's a few. Um, there's a few in the city, definitely, but they're all like there's two guys, contortionists in the city, but they're they have like I said different kind of a type of contortion. Ravi, he's doing more Indian kind of yoga stuff, and the other boy, Jonathan, he does more like aerial act. So we kind of like find our own little niche that we're calling to. He was uh, working Coney Island at the time, and I was uh, doing shows at the Bindle Stiffs, and I was interested in just playing around in Coney Island. And then maybe like three or so years ago, he asked me to join the Lucky Devil shows, and we started doing shows at CBGB's, and then started touring. Is there a community of performers and, you know, of your kind in Williamsburg? Uh, well, yeah, there's the Bindle Stiff Family Circus is based here in Williamsburg, and the Circus of Muck is here in Williamsburg, so it definitely is a community. What, I, what other acts do you perform? Do you do some more physically dangerous? Yeah, I do uh, other acts that I perform. Uh, I do a straight jack escape, 40 feet of chain. Um, I swallow razor blades and uh, 
dental floss and I pull them out connected. Uh, I eat glass. Uh, well, the act I did t today, I did the geek act. My tribute to the geek act, I bite the head off the chicken. I have nails on my nose. Who doesn't do that? <laughs> so this, what led you to magic? Uh, I was always, always interested in magic, and like, like I was saying, I, I started doing the kid shows, and then what I was more interested in was not, I, I never really enjoyed David Copperfield or Harry Blackstone, and I remember seeing Penn and Teller when I was younger. I was like, oh, I like that, like, I, and Harry Anderson, um, he used to be on Saturday Night Live, and did kind of different magic, and I, and I was like, oh, there, there are people doing what I like, it's not just, I'm weird. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this wild and wacky edition of Neighborhood Beat, Williamsburg, and Greenpoint. I'm your host, Carrie Smith.